Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. So I'll be looking at some Infinity Slayer gameplay on the map Longbow. This is in Big Team Battle, and so off the start here, I'm loading out with the ammo and mobility perks, which allow me to sprint infinitely to a power weapon, and then grab that power weapon and have extra ammo. Now at the beginning here, I'm very, very passive because I see all these radar dots on me. I'm going to fast forward through this part as I end up chasing one player back through our tunnel and this ends up taking way too much time. Overall, I should have um, pushed into the building from below and gone up into B base, uh, the base that it was behind me that I was just under. But I spend way too much time trying to get this player, but I can assure you that the film does have some better tips and tricks later on in it. I'm just going ahead and getting through this part because I do end up giving up a pretty dumb death right here. Now starting up right here, I do spawn kind of on the enemy side, so I'm going to push straight into uh, their cave area, and then I'm going to look at their base from their side. And I can see my teammate Kobe has pushed up here and is putting shots with a light rifle, so I'm going to tr try to clean up the kills he gives. And I want you to notice how the guy just killed. Track drop. I want you to notice the next player I begin shooting at who spawns in this cave area. Track drop. He just spawned in there. And you may be wondering, how in the world is that possible? Well, in Team Slayer, unlike Capture the Flag on Lombo, Team Slayer allows you to go into these side cave areas. And these are caves are not used nearly as much by people as I think they should be. And they are also good spawning locations. So as you can see by the dots on my radar, the enemy does have kind of a position up here. And that's why the game chose to spawn him in the caves. When you have a sort of position top center, your teammates can spawn safely in the caves and so on. It also is likely that he may have spawned closer to his base and then pushed up through the cave. Now right here, I spend a little bit too much time going after this player, but I want you to look at what I do here, okay? I want you to watch how I engage. I reload, and then right before my shield dead in this BR duel that's about to occur, I jump, okay? And the reason I can jump is because I'm using bumper jumper, which allows me to bump, jump with the left bumper and aim with my right stick at the same time. What this allows me to do is add a third dimension into my strafe making it very difficult for the current shot the enemy is firing to hit my head because I jump so fast straight into the air. This makes it to where my reticle is now on the enemy player's head and I get the final shot. All this happens very quickly, so I want you to see this because it's going to happen right here and it's going to happen with a kill. I'm going to get it very soon here as I out-BR this next player. This is literally how you want to run BR duels. You want to jump right as your shield are about to hit dead and jump slightly to the side. Don't just jump straight up in the air, jump to the side a little bit. But as you can see with those BR duels, when you do that, what's going to occur is you're shooting at the player's body, right? But when you jump, you're aiming at their head now. You see what happens there? You are now aiming at the enemy player's head when you jump. And that's really, really what you're going to be aiming for here. And I end up out BRing several players very, very well. My shot was very good on. Again, that's one of the reasons you don't want to use the assault rifle because someone who's using the battle rifle and is shooting, or should I say, hitting their shots is going to know what they're doing. Now I'm going to call down the rocket launcher here, and I don't get as many kills as I'd like to with it. But I'm going to call down the rocket launcher, and I am having ammo, so I do have six rockets available to me. And notice how I'm just staying in the center top B base and the side caves. The reason I call it top B base is because this is B or Bravo base in Dominion. Uh, the game type Dominion, so we call it B base. You can also call this top center base if you really want to. Or Banshee spawn, because Banshee spawns here and capture the flag. In Team Slayer, each team gets a tank and Banshee in their initial spawn. Now I want you to notice my very well played thoughts as I go on through here, and some of the tactical decisions I decide to make. Seeing as I'm hanging out on the enemy side, I hear my teammate call out, hey, I'm going to leave behind my Banshee, he just got out of this Banshee, and I'm going to go get in the enemy tank. Now, why is this a good idea? I have a rocket launcher, okay? The tank is much more powerful than the Banshees. In other words, the tank can take out a Banshee pretty easily if the Banshee decides in a frontal engagement. The tank can one-shot a Banshee. And I want you to notice what I do here. 
I end up deciding, okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run and grab the, the Banshee, and I'm going to bring it back to my teammate's top center. And as you can see, we're all spawning here, and I say, hey, Toby, or LMP Tobias, go get in that Banshee. And that's exactly what he does. As you can see him on my radar behind me, he goes and gets in that Banshee. And then I'm like, oh, okay, so the, the team, enemy team now has a Banshee. So let's go and get their Banshee. If you do this, okay, and you can have a power up in or anything, but notice how I'm sort of prioritizing my targets. Notice how my teammate is getting fired at in the tank, and although he is also taken out, and I unfortunately am taken out here as well, I want you to notice how I'm prioritizing targets. I didn't go for that Banshee because my teammate just got in that Banshee, and now we have two Banshees. And I also want you to notice how long my two teammates are able to stay alive in those two Banshees. It gets kind of ridiculous as the enemy team does hijack one Banshee, but we have two Banshees at multiple times. Another thing I'd like to say about this film is that most of my deaths are tactically kind of embarrassing, as you saw me thruster pack into the way of the oncoming Banshee as he splattered me. That actually ends up happening several times, not the splattering situation, but in various situations I don't play out the last split second of my death very well, and I unfortunately end up dying. Now right here, I want you to notice how I pursue this situation. I see all these dots on my radar above me, and as you can see, two players have died, and these players are going to be looking where I am, and I want you to notice how this player comes out and starts trying to engage me. I am in no position to fight four guys at once. So I'm going to back up to my teammates area and I'm going to stay on this side for a while. Now I'm not going to push straight up here because I know that it's likely multiple players are going to be pushing the top of the base, which is exactly what's happening. In fact, we have uh, three players that I can count um, right now on top of the base. So I'm not going to push up here. Never push this ramp un unless you know that all enemies have been suppressed. You want to go through this cave system and come in through the lower area so that you don't get fired, toss a grenade here, maybe curve around here, and just sort of flank around from behind. You don't want to ever push straight in unless you know the enemies have been suppressed. You see my teammate trying to lay down a bubble shield. Not a good idea. Again, amazing VR shots by me. I ended up jumping a little too late there, but I already had the fourth shot. Good job. I actually do a really good job of remaining versatile in my weapon choice. And I want you to notice how I pick up the DMR and allows me to get some really good long range shots on that guy at B base and um, kill him off. I don't think I would have been able to do that with the BR. And this guy has lost his overshield and this is what I'm talking about in terms of embarrassing deaths. The guy is one shot and somehow I missed two headshots in a row. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what was going on there. Maybe a little bit of lag, lag spike. I thought I hit that player um, and again right here uh, this player just ends up waiting for me to come around the corner. And even though I'm doing this or correctly, I'm approaching this situation correctly, I'm not jumping right here, which is exactly what he wants, because he could easily rocket the rock. He ends up getting a perfect rocket on me from long range, and there's really not much I'm able to do about this. As I go around the corner, and he shoots a perfect rocket at me to kill me. Now, um, right here, I'm going to try to get some shots on the enemy player at calling out weak right here and if getting another really good out BR here there's another good reason why you want to use the BR as you can see that final headshot was a little bit around the corner almost getting another call out of a one shot character I clean him up calling down the binary I'm gonna miss several shots with this you guys but my overall positioning is pretty solid um, almost get rocketed by the same player again and I want you to notice how this rocket guy is staying um, on this sort of side I'm staying on the snow ramp and uh, in this general area. That's what you want to do when you have a rocket launcher, and I'll be showing you that a little bit later on in the film. Now right here, since I know the enemy has control of B base, I don't want to be sitting at our base when I'm looking at the top center with a binary. The reason why is because this allows me to see not only this area and these players that are over here, sort of behind this barrier, but allows me to see farther back into the top center base. And there's three guys here. And while I'm going to get a few shots, I apologize for a lot of my missed shots here. Um, but you can drop down into the base as you see me do here, and then crouch jump back up very, very quickly. Um, with the binary, you want to sort of change your location constantly because the enemy players know where you are. There's a beam that shoots out the front of your binary when you're, shoot, when you're aiming um, with it zoomed once or twice. There's a big red beam shooting out the front of your 
um, your weapon. And so you really want to pay attention to that and know that the enemy players are going to know where you are. You want to sort of peek out and then drop down as soon as you know um, that you're not going to get any more kills immediately. And you only have two shots anyway, so you got to reload. Yeah, pushing into the center area, you may wonder, why am I doing this? Why did I just give away, away this position? Because I have two shots left. Well, one, I think the enemy players know I'm there now. But two, um, the railgun does typically spawn here. Okay, which it looks like my teammate just grabbed that or something. But also, the overshield spawns in the center. And I want you to s notice this here. The overshield is not on my HUD. Okay, there's no icon pointing into it, which is really kind of strange. This actually is a kind of common glitch in Halo 4, especially in big team battle. Items will spawn on the map, specifically that are in the center of everything, and I've seen this happen many times with the overshield, and they won't appear on players' huts. So you want to be checking these locations and sort of running through them pretty systematically. Now right here, I end up putting two shots into a ghost. Um, I think my teammates end up cleaning that up eventually. I'm not sure if I should have just avoided the ghost and stay, kept my binary shots for later. Um, but as it is, I'm still able to use this overshield to pretty good use um, overall. I would like to state that the, my, the next enemy player that I engage who's over by this sort of rock formation right here, this guy does not need to be pushing this location. You never want to be sort of in the center of the map like this as a player unless you're moving to somewhere like this lift, this ramp or you're going to be coming around here and jumping up on this rock to engage. The reason why is because you're out in the open, and I want you to notice how quickly this guy gets cleaned up with the assist as my teammate kills him as I call out the one shot. Now right here, I heard the saw, but unfortunately this ends up being the enemy player who has the saw. Again, just kind of an embarrassing death because I didn't understand that um, that was the enemy player who had the saw. I thought it was my teammate, Mr. Gigglebutts B11, who was bolt shotting in that base. All right, here is where I'm going to sort of show you the heavy weapons view of um, the longbow map. As I, you see, my teammate dies from a fuel rod, and I pick up his rocket launcher. My teammate obviously had ammo. Because I do have five rockets left, he had to have ammo when he had picked this up. Now, the enemy player has a fuel rod, so there is no freaking way I'm going to engage from here. He knows that I'm right around the corner, and you will die it, the the uh, fuel rod at close range will travel faster, much faster than a rocket launcher. You don't want to trade. I want to kill him and get away with his fuel rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang back here. I'm just going to sit here. Notice how I'm raining off the radar. This guy charges like an idiot around the corner with a saw. I pick up his sticky deck, and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can use a sticky deck here, but it ends up that, as you can see, this player is not paying attention to his radar, and this is very, very tactical. I want you to notice how I don't go up all the way up this ramp, come around this corner, and then push up. That takes way too long, and the enemy player is going to notice how the red dot on his radar went from a solid red dot to a solid red dot with an air... To, or, I'm sorry. Now, I want you to notice right here how I go up this ramp, how I'm right here and I'm creeping forward. Instead of going up this ramp um, like this and going up this ramp right here, and going all the way over here, and then going up this way, which would take way too long, but also the player would notice how the red dot with the arrow below it, sig signaling that I'm below him, changed to a solid red dot. He would probably notice that by then. I want you to notice how instead I crouch jump from this ramp up to here and immediately crouch. Now, a lot of players have been commenting, Dennis is Ryder, why do you randomly crouch at moments? Because I'm appearing off the radar. Even if you appear off the radar for like half a second, when you engage an enemy player like this and then jump out, it completely surprises them. They have no idea where you came from. Notice how I don't go through the tier rod and I hit the wall using the splash damage of the wall. Don't aim for players. Aim for the floor or wall next to them, and that will take advantage of the most splash damage. And I want you to notice my excellent flank here as I come around. This is also an amazing shot to use as far as the rocket launcher, and you can use it all the time and capture the flag, people will be pushing up from their base and get cornered behind this base and might be peeking out over here, and oh my gosh, I'm going to peek out. This is an amazing rocket shot, okay? And I've used it 
several times, um, and it's really nice. Ending up killing that player who had a, a railgun and getting the triple kill here um, behind players flanking them. Now, I also want you to notice my self-control as I do not charge this rocket launcher, but instead bait it using um, my carbine and my fuel rod to attack these players. My teammate has my back over here, and I end up getting some really solid slots with the carbine. If you're accurate with the carbine, it is a good weapon. The problem is it has such a shallow clip. What you just saw me do, getting a double kill with the carbine, is very rare. Most players will have to reload far before then, but because of my accuracy, I was able to get the double kill, and very quickly get the double kill. I wouldn't recommend using the carbine unless it's an emergency like this. As you can see, there's only eight kills remaining in the game. I'm gonna try to protect my tank, um, which uh, doesn't end up happening, unfortunately. I wish I would've been able to save my teammates more in the tank here, but I'm able to get some of the final few kills and help my teammates out here. Um, again, just trying to help my teammate, but my teammate ends up um, rocketing that player on top of him and dying. By trying to go over here, trying to help my teammate who's shooting the overshield guy. Because I hope this gives you a better understanding of how to play longbow big team battle. I know I had another film uh, where I got a perfection on longbow using the passive tank loadout, and I talked some about um, using active camo. I'll link that video also if you want to know how to play along a little bit better with using a different passive tank loadout uh, if you want to watch that video click in the top right hand corner right now that'll take you to that video just some more gameplay on longbow for you to enjoy and i talk about camo sniping and what i think about it so guys thank you for watching this gameplay let's go to the stat screen and see how i did so as you can see here i did pretty well 28 kills to assist six deaths but what's mainly surprising is how staggered and far away I am from the rest of my teammates' scores. Um, it definitely a commanding lead in terms of kills, and I'm playing with people like Mr. Gigabuts and iProby and Shuffling Manu, people who know I know can get a very high amount of kills and do very well in matchmaking. Um, it, I feel like I understand BTB and how to play big team battle a little bit better than the average player, and I hope that um, this gameplay shares some roots and um, little tips and tricks to help you play um, Longbow Big Team Battle a little bit better. Guys, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace, guys.